Hi everyone, Ricky here from Tech Talk. Thanks very much for joining us. Today I want to do a comparison and review of both the Samsung Galaxy A3 2016 and the HTC Desire 530 here. Massive thank you to Vodafone for sending me both these devices. And today I want to do a different video. So I'm doing a review as well as a comparison as these phones are so alike. So both these phones are from the Vodafone network. A massive thank you to them. Both of them are 4G devices. Both of them are on pay as you go and the Samsung as well is also available on contract, but more about that a bit later on. So in this video, I wanna go through specs, I wanna go through some key features. Also, we're gonna have a look at the power and performance with Geekbench 3 and speedtest.net, and also any other key notes that I came across while reviewing both of these phones here. So first of all, let's jump in and have a look at some of the key specs of both of these models. So the Samsung is always gonna be on the left-hand side here in our comparison and the HTC on the right. So first of all, the Samsung was released in December of 2015 and this is why it looks like an S6 compared to the S7. The HTC was released in March of 2016. The Samsung weighs 132 grams compared to 140 grams on the HTC. Moving on to thickness now, the device. The Samsung is 7.3 millimeters thick and the HTC is 8.3, so there is a difference there. So if I just bring these up side by side, you'll see very much as well, the style of the bodies are very different as well. I'm gonna go around and actually do a bit more of a full comparison later on. So both these phones are running Android, but the Samsung is running Android 5.1.1, and the HTC is actually running the newer Marshmallow, which is Android 6. Both these models are available in 16 gigabyte models, and you will roughly get 10 gigabytes of actual end user storage. Both of these can use a micro SD up to 256 gigabytes, so you can expand that storage really well, so you can listen to all your movies, TV shows, and you can take great photographs and record great videos with both of these phones. So moving on to the displays of these phones, first of all, let's talk about the Samsung Galaxy. It's a 4.7 inch AMOLED panel design, and the resolution is 720 by 1280, and you get a pixel resolution of 312 pixels per inch, and it's a Gorilla Glass 4, on the front and the back. Moving on to the HTC, it's slightly bigger, it's a five inch display, 720 by 1280 resolution. It is only an LCD panel, so that's why it's not as bright and brightness is turned up fully. Also, its pixel resolution is slightly lower at 294. This is due to the difference in screen size as well. I'm not too sure what protection it has on the front of the device. I did try and research this, but I couldn't find one. So moving on to the rear facing camera on these phones, there is a difference. So the Samsung Galaxy is running a 13 megapixel camera with a 1080p recording. Also, you'll see a flash on the back there and the logo. Moving on to the HTC, it's an eight megapixel camera with full HD recording at 1080p as well. And you can see that splash design there on the back and the logo as well. So moving on to the front facing cameras now for them selfie loving people out there, including myself, do love to take a good selfie from a great location. The Samsung has a five megapixel with a lens of F1.9. So the lens is a little bit bigger here to allow in more light so you can take great selfies even in the dark. The HTC has a five megapixel on the front with an F2.8, so there's quite a difference there. So actually taking photographs or selfies on this phone, it's gonna be better to go for the Samsung as that HTC lens there will not allow in as much light. So moving on to RAM now of these phones. The Samsung is running a 1.5 gigabytes of RAM and it's a Snapdragon 410. The HTC is also running 1.5 gigabytes of RAM, but it's a Snapdragon 210, so there's quite a difference there in performance. So moving on to battery now, this is very key for both these phones. So you can use your phone all day long, you can use the apps, you can test out the cameras and test out YouTube and how I've been testing it. It's been working really well. First of all, the Samsung has a 2,300 milliamp hour battery, which only just beats the HTC, and that has a 2,200 milliamp hour battery. Both these batteries are bigger than the iPhone 6S Plus. On the Samsung, you will get 14 hours of usage out of this. I have stress tested this quite a lot. I got between 10 hours, 10 to about 12 hours of actual video playback, music playback and actually really testing it. On the HTC, I got a good full day's usage out of this. So that was a good eight hours to 10 hours using all different applications. Again, using the camera, using YouTube, checking out Google Play Store, listening to movie trailers, checking out some music and that. 
So it was really good to see that both these phones can really hold a real full day usage or the Samsung, you might be able to push that to two days or depends how much you use your battery. Moving on to processors for both of these phones now, they've both got a quad core processor. The Samsung is running slightly higher, 1.5 gigahertz per them four cores. And the HTC is running at 1.1 gigahertz, so point four of a difference, but again, you'll see this in the speed test. Moving on to pricing now, the Samsung Galaxy A3 2016 is available on pay as you go on Vodafone Network at 225 pounds. The HTC is available as well on pay as you go at 130 pounds, so quite a difference in cost there. So you can save yourself about 90 pounds, it all depends which one you prefer. Samsung use a touch with UI and HTC have HTC Sense, so please bear that in mind. Samsung Galaxy A3 2016 is also available on contract with £10 up front and as little as £16 per month, but there is no contract option for the HTC Desire 530. So a couple of side notes that I've come up with that I just want to put in this video. The Samsung does come in two different colors. It comes in the black, as we can see here, and also a gold model. Both these devices are running the 4G network on Vodafone, as long as it is in your area, and they are both on the Vodafone 30-day trial. So this is their new trial where you can take out a phone. If you do not have it working in your area, or there's not enough network connection in your areas that you are in, Vodafone will refund and take the device back at no problems, no quibbles, no frills, they will just return it and it will be the end of that and you do have 30 day trials on both these phones. So I just wanna talk about the HTC Desire here. They do have this micro splash effect on the back here. You can see it on the home screen as well. And it was on the box as well in our unboxing. Go and check that out. But this is just a pattern design. It looks really good, a little bit funky. And also a key thing to just point out here, you can see it's gold on the back and that means our power sleep weight button is gold as well on the side here. So they've thought about continuity all the way through and looks really nice. So just going back to that front facing camera on the HTC, it also has a photo editor built in and also both these models, you can use Google Photos to store all your photographs in as well. So the HTC Desire 530 only comes in this one color, the gold and the black on Vodafone. So if you compare this to the Samsung, it only just comes in that one color, the gold or the black here. The design of the Samsung is so much better with its aluminum body with its Gorilla Glass on the front and Gorilla Glass on the back, and they are both Gorilla Glass 4, so your phone is gonna be well protected. So as you can see on the HTC here, it does have HTC boom sound. This has a HTC amp inside as well. So with that amp, with using headphones, which is gonna be up here at the top on the HTC, it's gonna sound really good because it has that HTC headphones. We have done sound tests for both these phones. They're gonna be linked down below, and please go and check them out as well. So the Samsung speaker is down here at the bottom and it's very good, it's very powerful, very loud as well and it doesn't actually lose its bass or its treble. It doesn't sound trapped either, neither does the HTC. Moving on to our next part of our comparison, I want to move on to Geekbench 3 and speedtest.net. So I have both these applications installed on the phone. They're both gonna be running on the 4G network on Vodafone network, we're not gonna use Wi-Fi. So I did have this problem in my past video where Wi-Fi was turned on on one of the devices, making it a little bit unfair in the comparison. So there is no Wi-Fi on either of these. So first of all, we'll do Geekbench 3. So three, two, one. Again, you get to see some of the key specs inside here. They're both running quad core. One's running at 1.5, one is running at 1.1. So the HTC is 1.1 and the Samsung Galaxy A3 2016 is 1.5. They both have roughly 1.5 gigabytes of RAM as well. So let's start the test together. So three, two, one. So as you can see here, there is quite a difference in score. So first of all, a single core score for the Samsung Galaxy A3 691 on the HTC Desire 530, it's 298. On the Samsung, it's 2,153 for a multi-core score and 1,007 for a multi-core score on the HTC Desire 530. So a real big comparison there, which is quite shocking to see actually. So first things first, there's a difference in the Snapdragon processors they're running as well. The Samsung Galaxy A3 is running a Snapdragon 410 processor and the HTC is running a 210 processor. So there is a difference there. 
There's a difference in clock speed as well by about 0.4 gigahertz. That's where we're gonna see the differences here. So you can, if I just tap across on each of these, you can see where our phones came in and you can see our nearest competitor or our closest competitor on both of these. Again, going through to the multi-core score there, you can see where it came. I know this one beat the Samsung Galaxy S6. So we've got to go a long way down here for the HTC. Okay, so we've just finished Geekbench 3. Let's move on to speedtest.net now. There's no applications running and we'll do an app launch. So three, two, one. Let's get both of these running together. Three, two, one. So as you can see, these are very close together here. So the Samsung has got about eight megabytes down compared to nine on the HTC and roughly about three megabytes for both upload speeds. So very close to see there. Just wanna load a couple more apps as well and see how we do. Let's do the Google Play Store. So three, two, one. Okay, load in something in the Google Play Store. So three, two, one. Going into the entertainment section here. Load in a movie. So there is a difference, like I said, in Android as well. One's running Android 5.1.1, which is the Samsung. And the HTC is running Android 6, which is a little bit annoying to see as the power and performance on the Samsung is slightly better as you see through the tests. I can't understand why Samsung haven't updated it yet to the new Marshmallow update. But Samsung always do lag behind sometimes in their updates. So let's try the camera application here, three, two, one. Okay, so as you can see, they're quite a difference. So loading Google Chrome in three, two, one. There we go, and you can see how well it does there. So moving on, let's have a look at our devices a little bit closer up. So first of all, so on the front, you have the camera, you have the logo, you've got an actual physical button and then two compassive touch buttons or your menu button and your back button there. We then turn it to the left-hand side. You will find your volume buttons here, which are nicely inlaid to the device, but protrude a tiny bit out so you can actually feel them. There's no texture to them, which is a shame. It's a nice, smooth finish. But for myself being registered blind, it would have been nice to actually have a different texture on them buttons. Turning around to the bottom of the device now, you're gonna find antenna bars, a 3.5 jack, so you can plug in your headphones and listen to your music while on the go. You've got a charger port, which is micro USB, and same on the HTC. So neither of these devices are using USB-C yet. So moving around to the right-hand side of the device, you're gonna find your power and sleep wake button, and also a slot here for your micro SIM and your SD card as well. They've got a dual tray there. I've also filmed how to put a SIM card and SD card in both of these phones. Go and check them out as well on the channel. So moving around to the top of the device now, you're gonna see antenna bars and a little microphone. Coming around to the back, which I've already shown you, you're gonna see the camera, it's flash, the Samsung brand in, and also that glass back there that loves fingerprints as well. So that was the Samsung A3. Let's move on to the HTC. So on the front of this device, you've got its boom sound at both sides. You've got your front facing camera. And on this one, you've got no physical button. You've just got three capacitive touch buttons. So please bear that in mind. Myself, I do actually like to rather have a physical button as it is a slightly easier. Turn into the left hand side. On this side, all you're gonna find is your SIM tray and SD card slot here, which is in a, just a pop up flap there. So just be careful to make sure you snap that back in. So it stays nice and secure. Coming down to the bottom now on the HTC, you're gonna find your charger port, which is a micro USB, as I discussed. Turning around to the right-hand side, you're gonna find your volume rockers, your power sleep wake button in that nice gold, and that's got a different texture. So these volume rockers are very smooth, but the power sleep wake button, it has a different texture and a different feel. And then finally, going around to the top, you're gonna to find your 3.5 jack. And then turning around to the back, you're gonna find Brandon, that splash dot design, which looks really nice. You've got your camera, your flash, 
you've got a little microphone and also down in this bottom hand corner you've got a little grip loop there which I showed in the unboxing where you can actually put a hand tie in there so you can actually hold this phone nice and easy. So bringing them side by side here you can really see that difference in millimeter there's only one millimeter in difference in size but you can actually really see it here but me personally I think the Samsung phone looks very sleek very slender and very nice design. It all depends what your personal choice is as well if you want the different design on the HTC it might be your desire to go for that. My personal thoughts are to go for the Samsung as I do like that design and I do like the feel of the device in my hand where the HTC does seem a little bit bulky. Okay so coming up to an end of our video let me know what you think which one is your favorite please give a comment down below just saying Samsung or HTC It'd be great to hear from you as always me personally I go towards more of the Samsung just because I prefer the design. So I used to have the Samsung Galaxy S5 before going back to iPhone, but I do like the sleek and slender design that Samsung have pulled from the S6. I know the S7 is newer, but this does represent the S6. So the new A3 2017 edition will look like the S7, which there isn't much in comparison, but we will see that. Moving on now to the HTC Desire 530. I do like its fun effect there on the back, the little different style. I do like the hand grip. That's quite a good thing to see. The boom stand is not as good as their flagship phones, but I do not expect it to be. But both phones look absolutely great. Also, a key thing I like about Samsung, with its AMOLED panel there, it does make it a lot brighter. So I hope you enjoyed this comparison and review of both of these phones. Let me know what you think down below. Please give it a thumbs up. Please always subscribe for our latest videos and I'll see you in our next one. Bye for now.